Welcome to this video. Today, you're going to learn how to use although, even though, and though. This is a question that a student had submitted and it's a great question, so I'm happy to answer it for you. Of course, I'm Jennifer from j4senglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you feel confident speaking English in public so you can take your career and your life to the next level. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive in with this video. Let's talk about how to use although, even though, and though. All three of these are transition words. They're used to show contrast. So what does that mean? To show contrast, it means you're going to have two ideas and the transition word, although, even though, or though, are going to connect those two ideas together. But those two ideas must have some sort of contrast in them. So you can think of one idea as more of a positive and the other idea as more of a negative. There has to be some sort of contrast. Now what's the difference between although, even though, and though? The level of formality, that's it. Although is the most formal, even though slightly less formal, and though is the most casual. Now, in terms of sentence structure, there's one difference also with though, which I'll explain at the end, but otherwise, the only difference between them is the formality. Let me give you an example. Even though I'm busy, I enrolled in that course. So here, notice how there are two distinct ideas. I'm busy, I enrolled in a course. You can think of these ideas as being in contrast. They're opposite ideas because one might think if you're busy, you wouldn't have time to enroll in a course. So that's why we can use although, even though, or though to show that contrast and connect those ideas together. Now notice the placement here. Although, even though, or though can come at the very beginning of a sentence. You can say, even though I'm busy, although I'm busy, though I'm busy, I enrolled in that course. Now, another common placement is to have although, even though, or though before your second idea. So you can think of it in the middle of your sentence. So I can take the, that exact same sentence, but change the placement and say, I enrolled in that course even though I'm busy. Although I'm busy, though I'm busy. So it can come at the very beginning of the sentence or in the middle of the sentence before your second idea. And it doesn't matter which one you use. Both of them are interchangeable and they both sound professional and natural. Now remember at the beginning of the video, I said there's one sentence structure with though that's different. And that sentence structure is that you can use though at the end of your sentence. This can only be done with though. So we don't do this with although and we don't do this with even though. It can only be done with though. So I could say I'm really busy. I enrolled in the course though and I can add though at the very end. This makes it sound a lot more casual, a lot more conversational, and what it's what you'll frequently hear native speakers use in conversation. Now, native speakers commonly use though at the end of the sentence when the second idea isn't identified, the contrast isn't identified, but it's obvious based on context. What do I mean by that? Well, let me show you a real world example. Here's something I wrote in the comment section of the YouTube video. And notice I said, great job practicing though. Great job practicing though. Now I'll be honest, though is optional. I could just completely get rid of it and say great job practicing. The only reason a native speaker includes though at the end of an idea is to imply that there's a contrast. So even though you don't see the contrast, it's there. So what is the contrast here? 
Well, the context is that this student tried a practice example and he made a mistake. So I corrected that mistake and I said, great job practicing though. So if I were to write this as our structure of idea one, idea two, combined with our transition word, I could say, although you made a mistake, you did a great job. Or you did a great job even though you made a mistake. So notice that I can take that same meaning and just imply that the contrast is there by using though at the very end of a sentence and only having the one idea. This is probably an advanced use and you probably won't feel comfortable using it yourself right now, but a lot of students are confused when native speakers just throw in a though and say something like thanks though, Thanks though, I love to though. So now you understand the only reason we're doing that is to show a contrast. So now you know how to use although, even though, and though. I'd like you to leave three example sentences, one using the transition word at the beginning, one using the transition word in the middle, and one using though at the end. Remember, for the final example, it has to be though because that's the only one we use at the end. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying.